Lola YouTube. I am Necrostevo. It is time for week number seven in season two of the Pokemon Premier League. We're getting close to the end now. This week, the Victorian Shadows are up against the Detroit Steel Wings, coached by the baddest Seabad. It is very likely that you are already subscribed and have been watching Seabad's season, whether it be here or in the Chuckle Premier League. But if you are not, be sure to go check them out. Seabad is another one of those opponents that I have a longer history with. He and I battled back in the previous seasons of the GBA years ago. Of course, before the battle starts, there will be a team builder. But if you want to jump directly into the action, there will be a timestamp for you to plug into down below. Let's get started with the matchup. First, you will notice that my Terra captains have changed. I no longer have Orthworm and Dodrio as Terra captains. The Titan has taken the Terra crown from them. It's now the moment you've all been waiting for. Time to announce this year's Prom King. Yes, I'm here! <laughs> thank you! Yes, it's me! Yes! <laughs> thank you! Thank you! And now my Titan can go ice, water, or ground. The Detroit Steel Rings have Thunderous, Therian Form, Weavile, Screamtail, Ursaluna Blood Moon, Suicune, Hisuian Arcanine, Espeon, Decidueye, Hisuian Gudra, Toxicroak, and Regirock. The Terra Captains on our opponent's side of the field are the Espeon that can go with either Psychic, Electric, or Fairy Typing, and the Toxicroak that can go with Fighting, Ground, or Dark Typing. Now right away, you see that our opponent has a few Pokemon that can benefit from the sun. Uh, Screamtail would get a Protosynthesis boost the same way that Walking Wake would. And of course, Fire-type moves would be boosted from the Hisuian Arcanine. And on top of both of those, Morning Sun being utilized by the Espeon would get boosted to 75% recovery. So there's a few Pokemon that he has that can take advantage of those different sun options. And thus, I did not know if I wanted to bring sun to this matchup. Ugh, the sun's too hot. One star? Would not recommend to a nearby solar system. Rate me one star. I am one star. That being said, screw it. We ball. Up first in the team matchup this week is Torkoal. Now this Torkoal, I decided to go with near max physical defense with the Heat Rock, Lava Plume, Scorching Sands, Body Press, and Rapid Spin. In this specific matchup, having Lava Plume and Scorching Sands gave me near perfect coverage across his entire team, bar something like a really bulky Suicune, and even then he'd be risking the burn on it. And I did want the option to remove entry hazards from my side of the field. And with Heat Rock, because the next member of my team, Venusaur, had a fantastic matchup against his entire team. Now, the reason I went for physically defensive on my Torkoal here was to have a swap into Toxicroak. It also gave me a soft switch into Decidueye if that decided to be physical, and it gave me an answer to Weavile, which without Torkoal kind of runs against my team unchecked, especially because I cannot Terra Orthworm any longer. Venusaur, I decided to go with a physically offensive set. We went max attack and the rest in to enough speed to outspeed something like a, a scream tail underneath sun getting that protosynthesis boost. After that, I chucked the rest into HP with poison jab, power whip, earthquake, and swords dance. That last slot was kind of a toss up between swords dance and sleep powder because against this team, I didn't actually know when I would grab that swords dance boost, but I did know if I could just bring in Venusaur and throw off attacks, I'd be a, in a pretty positive position, uh, especially for things, expecting Venusaur to be more specially oriented, like a Screamtail coming in or an Espeon coming in and thinking they can set up. Venusaur can just bop them for maximum damage and not have to worry about going with a mixed set or something on the more specially oriented side. The next teammate was a set that Icky Sprite helped me come up with, and I love this set. Now, it is a little bit of a double-edged sword. My opponent has a ghost type with Decidueye, but this Terrakion has close combat, upper hand, endure, and swords dance while holding a Salak Berry. Salak Berry, once you get down to 25% HP or less, will raise your speed one stage. And of course, upper hand is a new move where if your opponent is using a priority move, 
upper hand has a higher priority bracket, so it will go first, and it will always make the opponent flinch, with close combat as the final move because I just wanted the pure power. So together, let's count the different priority options that are on his side of the field. We have Ice Shard from Weavile, we have Extreme Speed from Hisuian Arcanine, we also have a nice Vacuum Wave from Blood Moon Ursa Luna. There's a very sneaky Shadow Sneak coming from Decidueye, and the craftiest Sucker Punch coming from Toxicroak. So there are several priority options that he could rely on here, and I really didn't necessarily see Decidueye coming to this matchup, and so I felt really comfortable going for this set. The idea being is that I could nab a Swords Dance off of the number of Pokemon that he has that Terrakion scares out, everything from the Weavile to the Blood Moon or Saluna, Arcanine, the Gudra, and the Regirock. I can scare all those out with Terrakion, which means I get a free Swords Dance, and then if something comes in, not only does it have to take a plus two close combat, but in, in the it's situation where he has a priority move, I can endure, get my Salak Berry, and now I'm plus one speed and plus two attack, and then I have an even stronger upper hand to use after I use that sword chance. So that was the thinking with that set. So a little bit more spicy on the Trachyon there, but man, I love this set. After that, we have our general dedicated lead once again, Crocodile here. Uh, Crocodile is carrying the Roselli Berry because his Espeon can tear into a fairy type. And of course the Screamtail is very likely to show up in this matchup. I have Knock Off, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, and Gunk Shot. And I had just enough speed to make sure that we can outrun his base, uh, his Arcanine with the rest into my own HP. And I put a fair amount into HP and attack instead of trying to go bulky because I wanted to ensure that I could two hit KO uh, Screamtail, I needed to two hit KO the Arcanine, or one hit KO if I'm able to go for the Earthquake. Uh, if there was something like a Colber Berry on the Espeon, I wanted to be able to KO it after the Colber Berry popped off there. And I also needed to make sure I could two hit KO the Gudra as well. So I did not want to go too bulky, and I was going to use Intimidate to help with that bulk situation. Now in a situation where the sun is up and I'm trying to switch Arcanine, uh, switch into Arcanine, I'm hoping that it's locked into a rock type move because an Intimidate will help me out. But if it's using a fire type move, that would explode my Crocodile's face. I exploded! Roselli Berry makes it really nice here, assuming I am able to hit the gunk shots. You just have to go for those confidently and take out the trash and hit your opponent in the face with it. Hey now, I need you to take out the trash. Okay, Lois, of course I gotta go. So that's why I wanted to put Gunk Shot on there. I did consider close combat because with 196 attack EVs, I always two hit KO, even like a bulkier Ursa Luna, but I didn't want to lower my defenses in that situation. Cause then if I have minus one defense, it's a lot easier for his priority options to pick me off as opposed to a lot of his priority options are physical, not lowering my defenses, so I can still take a hit and do something later. After that, we have our Assault Vest Orthworm. This is our dedicated swap into the Ursaluna Blood Moon. For the uninitiated, Ursaluna Blood Moon has a very high special attacking stat, and it gets a new signature move called Blood Moon that is just a really strong, normal special move, and it can't use that move two times in a row. It also, being a normal ground type, gets access to Earth Power, and Orthworm here would resist the Blood Moon and be immune to earth power because of the earth eater ability. With assault vest and max special defense, we take any hits from the blood moon bar focus blast. And focus blast is going to miss. So I plan on bringing Orthworm into that Ursula Blood Moon, having any of those other normal or resisted options not do a lot and just clicking body press on it. I went with Bulldoze, Heavy Slam, and Rock Slide in the other team slots just because of my uh, ability to hit either coverage options or lower the speed when I'm using Bulldoze there. The only thing that's nice about Orthworm is that it's a relatively free swap into the Screamtail and Screamtail can get fire coverage move, but with the Assault Vest, I'm not very worried about the damage output coming from those. And I can easily one hit KO or two hit KO if it's a physically defensive one back in return with Heavy Slam. The last teammate this week is our Moonblast, Moonlighting, Wish Baton Pass, Fable. So we have two ways to recover our HP. We have Wish and Moonlight. I wanted to take advantage of the fact that his team doesn't have very good fairy swap-ins and um, I can kind of spam fairy moves against it, but also every single time Clefable hits the field, it's going to invite in the Hisuian Gudra. And to a lesser extent, it will give free swap-ins to Hisuian Arcanine as well. That's why Baton Pass is here because I can bring it in and then click that baton pass immediately. I can also bring it in, click wish, and then click baton pass, hopefully being a little bit slower than those offensive threats. With unaware, I can also keep 
the clefable in the back and just be a soft check in case he tries to go for a swords dance on the weavile or if he goes for a calm mine on the ursulina blood moon that being said this is a specially defensive set so i don't really want it to take the physical hits from the weavile but it can in a pinch if it is needed so once again that is our horde this week thank you for watching the team builder and it is time for us to get into the battle i have finally done it i remembered to click record and i unpaused it <laughs> feels good seabat has brought toxicroak ursaluna blood moon weavile the Screamtail, the Decidueye, and the Espeon to our battle. So both of his possible Terra Captains are here. And with those Pokemon, I figured that he was more likely to lead off with either the Screamtail and keep the Espeon in the back to try to swap it in to bounce back some hazards or something like that. I could have also seen a possible um, Decidueye lead, but he leads with Blood Moon and we have a problem because here, it is very likely that he would just go for Focus Blast, and I don't really want Orthworm to take that, but I don't have anything else to take that. Um, the safer play, in generally, is just to go for the normal or the ground type move, and I thought he would make the safer move option earlier, because he could always just go for the coverage move afterwards. I decide to just swap out my Crooked Eye. Apparently, I won. It was a fun battle overall. It was very fast paced as well. I think here, it felt like the battle was over before I even really started to get momentum built up internally. Overall, I definitely enjoyed it. Have a fantastic day, you all. And thank you so much. Huh. Okay, let's run that back. That battle happened much, much too quickly. Okay, so we have lead. Blood Moon Ursaluna against my Crocodile. Again, I want to swap out here because if he stays in and goes for either the ground type move or the normal move, it does kind of blow up my Crocodile. And I don't want to take that much damage on Crocodile this early. A safe swap is into my Orthworm because unless he's running a lot of special attack, I have a good shot at taking two Focus Blasts as well. Unfortunately, with Crocodile being a dark type, it does incentivize him to go for that Focus Blast and he does hit it as well. Some trainers are just built differently. I cannot get my Pokemon to hit Focus Blast hardly ever, which is why I don't ever really use it. Uh, he goes for Focus Blast again. That's not Specs damage, but I was like, wow. So we just have a max special attack uh, Ursaluna here. And um, thinking that he would swap I go out to Clefable to soak up another one, and he just stays in and goes for a Blood Moon, but weirdly he outspeeds me. I did not see that coming. That means that he is heavily invested in speed, and uh, remember I even put a tiny bit of speed on my Clefable to speed creep some of his other Pokemon that tied base 60. So thinking that he has a lot of speed and special attack, that would not leave very much room for him to have a lot of bolt. So I go out to my physically offensive Venusaur with Life Orb, and I was running the calcs, and there is big, he would need a fair amount of bulk to take a Power Whip from my Venusaur. And so I was thinking, hey, here, I have basically a great situation to force him out. I know I'm faster, because I don't think there is, he can't outspeed me without a Choice Scarf with the speed investment that I have. And so I was like, great, we're just gonna hit this man with Power Whip. He goes out into Espeon, and if you blink, then you might have missed the Espeon. Don't blink. Don't even blink. Don't turn your back. Don't look away and don't blink. But here it does reveal to him that I am life orb and physical at the same time, although I have brought mix before, so he might have thought that I had a mix set there. Espeon did not take that hit, and I am very happy that I didn't bother going for a sleep powder or anything there. Now he goes out to Weavile to force me out. I was so tempted here to stay in. But now that Weavile gets Triple Axel instead of something like Ice Punch, Venusaur can no longer take that hit if all three of those Icicle, uh, Triple Axels hit. Um, I remember back in the day where I could just leave Venusaur in on Weavile because the strongest Ice move it had was Ice Punch. That was, that was great. I enjoyed being able to do that. Not really knowing what to swap into it and wondering if he was just going to double out 
I decide to kind of make a mid-ground play and go out into Torkoal, thinking that he might try to double out into something to take a hit from Venusaur at the same time. But he goes for a very aggressive switch and he goes out to the Ursaluna Blood Moon. Here, I'm in a poor position because he is definitely incentivized to go for the ground type move, which is pretty obvious. And so I try to bring an Orthworm to soak up that damage, but he goes for Focus Blast and he misses. That's what I was expecting to happen, but he has the blunder policy, which doubles his speed in the event that he misses a move. So now his uh, Ursa Luna, it kind of outspeeds my whole team. Uh, he <laughs> takes out my Orthworm and I go out into Venusaur just because underneath the sun, I don't have to worry about him outspeeding me. And again, I haven't hit this thing yet, so I don't know what type of damage he's going to take, but I was very confident that a max physically offensive power whip would KO him, but he lives with a tiny amount of HP and KOs my Venusaur. So I don't have any way to outspeed this thing now. And all the remaining members that I have, he can basically one shot. I would not have done that if I thought that he would have lived the move, but I I even put some bulk on it on the calc, and he needed a lot of bulk to live the hit. So we're gonna go out to Terrakion here. I know that he knows that you know, he outspeeds me. So I'm gonna go for Endure, which will activate my Shellac Berry at the end of uh, taking the, the turn here. That was the only way for me to get out of the situation where I just get swept by Ursa Luna. So unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to hit the Decidueye. The Decidueye walls this set completely, and that makes my Crocodile incredibly important because if it comes down to a situation to where it's just Terrakion and he still has the Decidueye alive, then I lose. So I am able to force the Ursa Luna off the field at the cost of two Pokemon and 99% of Terrakion's HP. Oh, how unfortunate. How very, very, very unfortunate. Here, I do decide to go back out the Torkoal, thinking that I could take any hit from the Decidueye here, but he just goes for U-Turn, which was smart because that obviously would have finished off Terrakion. Of course, he doesn't know that I can't touch him at that point, but I only had one HP from the Endure. So he gets to bring back in this thing again, and I was like, I don't have a swap. I don't have a swap. Someone else! So once again, we're, now that Orthworm is not here, he just gets to go for these Earth Powers with Impunity, and I don't have a thing I can do about it. I'm down to three Pokemon, one of which has one HP, and the other one has 25% of his HP. So we're gonna put a lot of responsibility. Yeah, responsible! <laughs> on Crocodile to handle what is suddenly the end game. I don't know why I keep having these matches where I get exploded. I exploded! Uh, this happened against Jay Ricky, and <laughs> it's like I end up playing a whole battle with so few pieces because I'm not making the calls that I need to make. Or, I don't know, I don't even know if it's that, because I made the call here, but the damage roll wasn't in my favor. Um, I don't know, it, it, it was just really jarring in the time of the battle there. Uh, here, after he pops my Roselli Berry, once again, we have just a bear, he barely lives this gunk shot. And at least now I don't have to risk the gunk shot, and I did hit the gunk shot, of course, Crocodile. That's why you have on the built-in shades the prescription shades there. We don't have to worry about you missing those. You can join us if you're cool. I'm not getting those back. So we do hit the gunk shot. We bring this down to critical HP and I decide to set up my stealth rocks. I keep putting things down into low range and I figured, I don't know what he's gonna go for, but I'm not really worried about anything that he goes for. And so he went for wish, which I was like, hey, free stealth rocks for me. And so I get to KO him there and I don't think that the Ursa Luna is in range of the Stealth Rocks yet just because of how the mechanics work with the HP and it resists Stealth Rocks, so it's going to take less damage from those. So I think it needs two switches into Stealth Rocks. But if the Ursa Luna comes in, I basically lose a Pokemon, so I don't want that thing swapping in anyway. Here, his Toxicroak comes in, and I really didn't have a, another good play. I knew he was going to Terra, and I did not like the 50-50 of guessing what type he could Terra into. Remember, he had access to Fighting, Ground, and dark. If he, if I went for a, a, a dark type move and he tear it into a dark or the fighting type, then I would barely do any damage. If I went for the ground type move there, that would be great. But if he tear it into fighting, then he's going to live and probably KO me. He actually went for vacuum wave. And I was like, ah, 
The other thing I was hoping there is that he was physical so that way I could swap back in with my Intimidate. We also saw Life Orb on his Toxic Croak, and that gives me a little bit of a glimmer here to get rid of the Toxic Croak. Sludge Bomb does take down my Clefable. I couldn't really risk swapping out at that point, but he doesn't know that I have upper hand on my Terrakion. So I have two options. I could go out into Crocodile, hope I live the priority fighting type move, which I should with my HP investment. Then I don't have enough HP to do anything against his remaining teammates. Or go out to Terrakion and hope that an upper hand KOs him from this range. Uh, I did go for Endure here because if he stayed in and attacked, then that would give me an extra hit of Life Orb on him. So he's going to take 10% more HP damage here. And I was like, okay, now if he doesn't have any bulk, this is a range that I could possibly KO from. And I go for upper hand, but without plus two that, and I don't have a boosting damaging item rather, nothing to boost my attack or anything like that. So it does not KO, but we do put him really, really low. Definitely low enough so that later I don't have to necessarily predict on it if I don't want to. The Sidui is back and uh this sucks i can't hit this thing i have no way to hit this thing and we do see that he has leftovers and i was like ah, it's probably defensive you turn leftovers i didn't know if he would be like giga drain or anything like that i do swap out here hoping that he was a physically oriented decidui because uh, if he were then that would mean that i could take those hits but he is special with giga drain and this basically unfortunately seals this battle up because now my Crocodile has so little HP that I can't really do that much here. I did know that I outsped him, and so I just stayed in and I went for the knockoff with Crocodile. Because if I eliminated the Decidueye, then I could still upper hand the Weavile later if he tried to go for a, um, if he happened to be like adamant instead of jolly and he tried to go for a priority move, I could upper hand and knock that out. But with the priority moves on the Toxic Croak, there's nothing that my Crocodile can do against it. And then at best, I go out to my Terrakion afterwards and then the Decidueye comes in and it walls the Terrakion. So there was an opportunity there uh, earlier on in the battle where I could have called a swap Someone else. and um, done a little bit more damage. But I really think that I lost this battle very early on when my Venusaur went down. From there, my whole team just fell apart because I had to use up my Terrakion strategy to at least force the plus two Ursaluna off the field. And that's just not how I envision using that Ursaluna in this situation, at least. I could have also put Stone Edge on the Trakion over maybe over Swords Dance because I didn't click it anywhere here, but that really went against the whole idea of the set. So, but all that being said, thank you very much, Seabad, for the battle. It was phenomenal to battle you again after so long. And I hope you all enjoyed getting to watch this. Went a little bit more quirky on the sets, but it it was a fun battle overall it was very fast paced as well i think here it felt like the battle was over before i even really started to get momentum built up internally Whoa, deja vu. overall i definitely enjoyed it not not the way that i envisioned things going yeah also it probably would have been better if i had uh not let Orthworm take the damage from the Focus Blast. But at the time, I did not foresee Blunder policy, and I thought I could always revenge the Ursa Luna very easily in that situation. So that's just one of those situations where the the, the prep really decided things before any of the players hit the field. Yeah. I'm going to go now. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth came out, and I am going to go play that. So if you all are going to be playing that this weekend, be sure to let me know. I would like to know if you made it to this part of the video, who's your favorite Final Fantasy VII character? My favorite Final Fantasy Kevin. Kevin? 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 Help me! I don't think there's any Final Fantasy characters named Kevin. I got a little startled when my phone went off there. My favorite Final Fantasy VII character is Vincent Valentine. Uh, every Valentine's Day, my fiance and I always exchange Vincent Price and Vincent Valentine's themed gifts. And I have a little Final Fantasy shelf that I put all my Vincent Valentine stuff on. So this year I got yet another Vincent Valentine figurine. And uh, man, am I excited to see him in the Rebirth game. It would be cool to do a draft league team where everyone in the team is named after Final Fantasy care. Uh, why do I keep saying Kevin? Is there someone watching this named Kevin? Your name is in my brain. I don't appreciate it. I don't know if it's just a slip of my tongue or that I'm tired, 
I keep saying Final Fantasy Kevin. I don't even know what that is. Now we're just vamping at this point. Uh, okay. Anyways, Draftly team idea. Nicknames, all Final Fantasy characters. I can get behind that because there's a lot of them. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Have a fantastic day, you all. And thank you so much for watching this video.